Welcome back. The plastic surgery business is booming and you can place part of the blame on the pandemic and Zoom. Dr. Richard Westreich is joining us now to explain what they've been seeing and why. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining me this morning. Good morning. Pleasure to be on. Okay, so we're talking Zooms, we're talking pandemic. Uh, is that what this was all about? People had more time on their hands and then they started seeing themselves on Zoom. Yeah, it was an interesting transition. I think in the beginning, obviously it wasn't just because of the Zoom. I think uh, some people just really wanted to get out and do something mainly for themselves because they had been pent up for so long. I think the other thing was really about opportunity you know, most people spend about five years researching a cosmetic procedure before they get it done. Mm -hmm. And their research basically went into hyper mode because they had so much time. And then um, things became more available because we were doing virtual consults. So all these things kind of came together at the beginning of the pandemic. And just from the get go, people were really excited to, you know, get out and do some things to help enhance the way they felt. Okay, so let's talk about some of the most popular procedures. Uh, and I understand number one on that list is breast augmentation, huh? Absolutely. And interestingly, uh, during the course of the past year, for example, in 2019, the top two procedures were breast augmentation and liposuction. But in 2020, they were rhinoplasty and eye lifts. Hmm. So because of the Zoom and the transition, it, it's actually changed during the pandemic in terms of which procedures are most popular. But breast augmentation is definitely still one of the top. Okay, well, what is a Brazilian butt lift, which is apparently number two? What does that have to do with Zoom? Because <laughs> you can't um, see that. Probably nothing. There's nothing, uh, I mean, depends what kind of Zoom. But uh, ultimately, uh, a Brazilian butt lift is when you perform liposuction and then you process the fat for what's called fat transfer which you can do anywhere in the body. For example, we do fat transfer on the face all the time, but for a Brazilian butt lift, they use the fat to re-sculpt the backside into a more pleasing and lifted and rounded shape. Okay, so on your list, I saw we had breast augmentation, Brazilian butt lift, liposuction, rhinoplasty, eyelid surgery, facelifts. Is this something we were seeing more so in women than men, or were you experience it with everybody? Well, traditionally, all these procedures have been more popular in women than men. Uh, over the last 10 years or so, it's started to even out a little bit. What I would say I found during the pandemic is actually the jawline procedures have become very popular with men. For example, they're seeing themselves on the Zoom mm -hmm. and they just don't like having that extra stuff underneath. Okay, so what do you do for that? So in other words, you're defining their jaws a little more? Exactly. That made a big, a big increase during this whole pandemic. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's a range of non-invasive to more invasive, sort of the traditional facelift. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing is that with technology, over the last decade, there are actually good options in the middle, what I like to call minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to necessarily go under for these procedures, but they are more effective than say the surface heating type of procedures that uh, we've done in the past. So okay. there's a lot of great options. Okay, I gotta ask you though, because you know, as people had time and people were apparently saving more money over the pandemic, maybe this was one mm -hmm. outlet that they were using. Uh, what words of caution do you have, though, as far as where you go to get these procedures done? Well, I think the big thing is that the availability and the opportunity is a double-edged sword. Just because it's easy to do a virtual consultation and you have the time to get this done doesn't mean that you should necessarily rush to get it done. As I said at the beginning, most people in the past took about five years of research and contemplation before they actually got a procedure. Mm -hmm. And now that we have virtual consults and like I can see twice as many pe people uh, on virtual consults. So I'm seeing more patients. And as a patient, you don't have to take off from work and travel to the doctor's office. So it's a lot more efficient for you as well. So I think the, the cautionary word that I would say is just slow down okay <laughs> make sure that, that that you've done your research that you've found somebody that you think is going to be appropriate for you 
uh, and that is the right thing for you to do. Otherwise, just take a step back and kind of go back to the old mindset and maybe go on a couple more consultations until you feel comfortable. I love that. Do your research. Wise words, Dr. Richard West Westreich. Thanks so much for joining me today um, and appreciate your time. Interesting conversation. Thank you so much. Okay, you great. take care. Have a great day.